Texting, texting, texting. We are live on a Man Up Monday. Welcome back to the Mid Sack. This is IDD. For those of you who know, I don't disagree. The highly questionable one on our Jamiliaccio flying soul tonight. Tom is back. Um, spent the night. His dad had surgery, so he was spending some time with him. So he's sitting this one out. Hopefully, we'll have him back on Wednesday. Hopefully, his dad is feeling better. Um, Segment one tonight was going to be college basketball. We're going to save it for segment two because we have to talk about America's dumbest basketball team again, uh, showing why they're America's dumbest basketball team again on full display. And, and, and perhaps, dare I say, a new low. I don't know that I've ever seen them do what I saw tonight. As, as dumb as I've seen them play. Some of the, the just, if you know the game of basketball, if you've played at the college level, if you've coached for 22 years from six all the way through high school, AAU, everything in between, basketball camps, Red Auerbach, Dave Cowens, Don Nelson, Satchins, these are basketball, this is basketball royalty. These are the men that taught me how to play. Okay, what this team continues to do from a, from a basketball IQ standpoint makes zero sense. It makes zero sense. Let me set the stage for you. And I really want, right now, I'm talking to the pink hats, the idiots, the ones who will sit there and look at this game and go, well, they can't win them all. And right there, you know that the person saying that knows absolutely nothing about basketball. Because if you watch this game tonight and you know basketball, that is not what would have come out of your mouth. No. What would have come out of your mouth after the vomit, okay? Because it's it just this is a new level of idiocy we're talking about tonight. The Boston Celtics, with their two best players on the court, don't give me the whole Derek White and Drew Holiday didn't play. The Atlanta Hawks, who they were playing tonight, were missing Trey Young. He is their best player. He didn't play. Okay, he wasn't in uniform. Our two best players were, okay? And Boston ran out to a 30-point lead at some point in the second quarter. They were up 30. At one point, they were 10 of 23 from the three-point line. It was looking good. Okay, they're not screwing around tonight. And then it happened. First, they took their foot off the gas. Atlanta trimmed that lead from 30 to 16 at the half. Um, Boston... At the end of the third, it was, I think it was tied. Um, I don't know. It was 40, here's the deal. It was 44 to 22 after one. The second half, as I said, Boston was at 1.30 points. Um, I'm sorry, it was 18 at the half, okay? At the end of the third quarter, it was just six. Atlanta outscored them by four. And then Atlanta outscored them by eight in the fourth quarter to erase a 30-point deficit and win, without their best player, 120-118, to 118, snapping Boston's nine-game win streak. Now, again, the pink hats, the morons, the pom-pom waving, blind as fuck. Well, they've got, you can't win them all, RJ. Shut the fuck up with that illiterate half-bait bullshit. Honestly. It's not that you can't win them all. They've lost 14 times this year. Clearly, you can't win them all. But here's what you also can't do. You can't blow a 30-point lead to a team that is eight games below 500 and missing their best fucking player. Why does that not make sense to some of you? I don't get it. You, you don't have to know what I know about basketball to have some common sense. Common sense tells you if your two best players are playing, their best player is not playing, and you're up 30 points at some point in this game after the first quarter, you don't lose that game. The only way you lose that game is if the two best players that I'm talking about Either foul out or get knocked out, ejected, injured, something. That's the only acceptable scenario. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum don't finish the game for whatever reason. Injury, fouls, whatever. That's the only way, conceivable way, common sense way you lose that game. 
But the Boston Celtics have proven time and time and time again over the past two and a half, three years, that common sense doesn't apply to them. Neither does basketball IQ. And the worst part about it is the lack of basketball IQ comes from their two best players. The last possession of the game that Boston had, they're up one with the ball. You would think this is an ideal scenario. Jalen Brown, who, by the way, has been having a hell of a second half since the All-Star break. He really has. He still can't make free throws, and he missed them again tonight. But that aside, he's been playing very well. Tonight, he dribbled the ball for almost 23 seconds by himself. Now, we have the ball on a one-point lead. He dribbled the ball. There was no ball movement. There was no set. There was no reversal. He stood there and dribbled the ball for close to 20, between 20 and 23 seconds, and then heaved up a contested three-point shot, which, of course, he missed. Up one with the ball. You've got him and, and Jason Tatum, and you've still got Porzingis out there. You've got enough weapons to move this ball around and work and get a – you probably would have gotten a dunk if you'd moved it around. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're going to put the, the cape on, and we're going to play hero ball. And this is why the experts – Question them. And it is justifiable. They've done it too many times. This team is notorious for beating itself. Okay? And tonight, again, and again, I've never seen this one, though. I've never seen them blow a 30-point lead where the other team's best player wasn't playing and our two best players were healthy and on the court. I've never seen them. This was a new low for them tonight. Um... And again, I know what you're gonna, the pink cats are gonna say. They're 57 and 15, RJ. They're still six games up on the next best team. That is not the freaking point. If your best players don't know how to play situational basketball, don't play to their strengths. The Atlanta Hawks have no one that can stop Tatum and Brown from going to the basket. They have to double-team them if they drive. That's all they'd have to do. And get a reversal. When the de- Then you get the defense rotating, and that's when you get into a gap or a seam. Not these idiots. No. Nope. Let's pound the ball into the ground, which, by the way, let me give you a little basketball lesson for you idiots out there as to why this is so infuriating. When you pound the ball into the ground, the defense, all it has to do is stand there. Do you know what it's doing? It's just waiting for you. And there's five of them waiting for you. They're set. They're ready. As opposed to you moving the ball around. For the, You ever notice when the Celtics are moving the ball, they're, they're unguardable? Because they move the ball so well when they choose to do it, the defense can't recover. That's all they had to do. And they would have created a much better shot than the ones they got down the stretch. But nope, Tatum and Brown took turns playing what I call hero ball, which usually ends up in in zero wins. And tonight, again, it happened. And it happened to a far inferior opponent who didn't have their best player, and you had both of yours. I'm sorry. That is not acceptable. There is no, there is nothing you can say to me in that situation, that scenario, that makes what happened tonight acceptable. And I don't know what happened in the post game. My buddy Ian was watching it, but for Joe Missoula to sit there and talk about analytics, there are no analytics for you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and you were not demanding they go to the basket. You weren't running a set to get ball versus to, get, to make the defense shift. You weren't demanding, look, we're going to we're gonna run a, f- a five out, we're going to reverse the ball, and then we're going to get these two on a reversal, and when the gap opens up, they're going to shoot the gap and get to the basket. Not, okay, Jason, you're going to pound the ball around for about 15 seconds, let the defense get set, and then put that cape on and take us home, baby. Or Jalen Brown, same thing, the play after that. I mean, just stupid. Fucking basketball. Stupid with a capital S. And this is why, let me put it this way, the Denver Nuggets would never have lost a game like this tonight. Never. Never. And that's the team everybody says is in their way, and they're 2-0 and against Boston because Boston is not as smart as Denver. And they proved it again tonight. 
In the big scheme of things, no, it pro- the, in terms of the loss, it doesn't really matter. They're six games up. They're, they're ten games up on the Milwaukee Bucks. Nobody's catching them. That isn't the point. But here's what you idiots, you pink hats, don't get. Mad, get. When the playoffs start, everybody is 0-0. Zero, zero. And, like, and, and, and an approach like this can cost you a game, a series, a season, and a championship. And you've already seen them do this twice to inferior opponents. So what makes you think after what we saw tonight they've learned their lesson? Nothing tells me after that they've learned their lesson. They're just more talented than they've been in the past. Yeah, okay, if Holiday and Derek White are out there, does this probably happen? I don't know. But should that have mattered? I mean, Derek White, as great as he is, isn't better than Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum, and neither is Drew Holiday. You had the two best, you had the three best, you want to throw Porzingis in there, on the court. There's no fucking way you blow a 30-point lead to a team without their best player. And you've got those three guys, your three top scorers, in the lineup. Porzingis was just as guilty. He kept jacking threes. Why he didn't take his seven foot three ass down to the block, which he did in the first half. That's why that's part of the reason why they ballooned to a three point lead. He was going to the basket or posting up or, or cutting or whatever, but he was going to the hole. That all stopped after halftime. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Peyton Pritchard was good, 15 points, six assists. Wasn't on him. But again, after going 10 for 23 from the three, this is the problem with the Celtics. They kept shooting them. When all they had to do was reverse the ball once or twice, get somebody into a gap, find the big man, roll into the hoop, high percentage shots, get to the foul line, and and crush this team. That's all they had to do. It's not rocket scientists. They made this harder than it had to be, and it cost them tonight. Because here's what you dickheads that, that, that you can't win them all, you morons, don't get. The team they're playing is another is an NBA team. They're professionals. If you don't bury them, they'll come back and beat you. They have pride. If the playoffs start today, that Atlanta team with, without Trey Young is in the playoffs. So they're not to be taken lightly. You put them down and you crush them. You don't take your foot off the gas. You don't settle for threes the easy way out. You go to the basket and you systematically take them apart. We saw them do it to Philadelphia. We've seen them do it a couple times. It's not that they can't do it. They chose not to do it after having a couple days off. I don't want to hear about five games and seven nights. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. So we're not making any excuses for the Boston Celtics tonight. They proved once again, for all the talent in that in that locker room, they are still the dumbest basketball team in America. And until Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum get smarter, smarter, this team is not winning a championship. Okay, you better pray the Denver Nuggets aren't waiting for them in the finals because they'll simply outsmart them. And it's simple to do. This team tonight, this Atlanta Hawks team can't hold Denver's jock. And they didn't have Trey Young, who Ian says is a chucker. Well, maybe a chucker, Ian, but he's a 24 point per game chucker. And he also have, averages almost double digits in assists. I think he actually, I think, he, I think he's number two in the league in assists, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Trey Young is he even there yet? Didn't play. Uh, it was even a coach's decision. I don't even know what it was, but he. Let's see if I can find him. Yeah, Trey Young. This is what they were missing, Ian. Trey Young averages 26 points a game. He's 11th in the league. He averages 10.8 assists. He's second in the league in assists. That's who was not in their lineup tonight. Absolutely. No fucking excuse. Chris Washburn, he's a Celtics beat writer. I hope, I hope you ripped Missoula a new one, especially if he came back to you with that stupid analytical answer. Okay? That's stupid. Where's the, where's the common sense answer, Missoula? I don't care about your analytics. What You tell me that common sense is telling you that when you have Tatum and Brown and they can't you're not, go to the basket... Go to the basket, 38 three-point attempts, 19 free throws. And you went 11 for 38. This is why people quit criticize you, Missoula. You have to be able to win on the nights when the threes aren't falling. 
okay? And when you have two guys like that that can't be stopped and throw Peyton Pritchard, he was going the basket pretty well tonight. You go to the basket and you punish them from the foul line. In Jalen Brown's case, here's the problem. He missed more free throws tonight. If we go to Jalen, they missed six free throws. They were, then they were 13 for 19, okay? Jalen Brown, um, where is he? Do I have this score? I have it somewhere. Jalen Brown today missed at least two free throws again. I mean, he. This is just. It's 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 so mind-boggling that a guy with with his talent can't shoot eighty percent from the foul line. It, it the only the only acceptable reason is that he doesn't practice them enough. Okay, you don't stay in the gym. Till you make 100, Jalen Brown. You stay in the gym until you go 100 out of 100, so you can't miss. I've told my buddy who's not here tonight many times, the difference between good and great is this. And this, by the way, Larry Bird is the one who said this to me in a camp, right out of Rock's camp. He asked the question, what's the difference between good and great? The good do it till they get it right. The great do it till they can't get it wrong. That came out of Larry Bird's mouth. So tell me again how it's okay to lose this game tonight. It's not. It's not. In fact, it, it, it's troubling. It's troubling because it tells you they've learned nothing. Their best players have learned nothing. And we are 72 games into this season, boys and girls. And those two are as dumb as they've ever been. Okay? As dumb as they've ever been. Jalen Brown missed two more free throws tonight. So... Two more free throws. He shoots. His stats, just so you know, the $304 million man, who has improved his left hand. I said, you know, he has. But he still can't shoot free throws to save his life. And he's a two-guard. He's not a center. He's not Shaquille O'Neal. He's not, he's not, he's not Luke Cornett. He's a, he, I mean, he is literally, where is he? Mm -mm -mm. He's a career 72% free throw shooter. He's down 6% from last year. He was 76 last year. He is a shade over 70 this year. He's gone down in terms of free throws. If he makes the two that he missed, the game's tied and they're in overtime. Maybe they pull it out. I don't know. But the bottom line is against Denver, the game they lost in Denver, they lost by six points. Jalen Brown missed seven free throws. And he had 41 points. But he missed seven free throws. They lost by six. It's simple math. There's your analytics, Joe. <laughs> so, any event, that's going to do it for segment one. Boston Celtics, take your head out of your ass. You are a suspect, and you are on you are on alert. You are on dumbass alert. Dumbass alert. The Boston Celtics are still the dumbest basketball team in America, and they need to know that. And until they smarten up, they're not winning a damn championship. I don't care how much talent they have. They were supremely more talented than that opponent tonight. They found a way to lose. And as we said before, there's no team that can beat the Celtics if they're on their game, but the Celtics are fully capable of beating themselves, and that's why they are stout. And tonight, exhibit A, again. 30-point lead, no Trey Young. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Porzingis all played. No excuse. When we come back, segment two, the Sweet 16 is set. And Caitlin Clark advances to the Sweet 16 in her last game at Iowa. We will cover those things in segment two. Back in a minute.